Welcome into a special edition of the Original Gangsters podcast. This is a triple crossover edition with uh, Sit Down News and Mob Talk Sit Down. I'm talking John Panisi, Dave Schratweiser, and Scott Bernstein from the OG podcast getting together to deep dive some breaking news that's uh, that's really quite surreal uh with what happened at a long island funeral home just a couple days ago uh there was a internal dispute in the bonanno crime family that erupted into a brawl at the funeral of vito grimaldi who was an uh, old school bonanno uh soldier and i believe he became a capo before he got demoted and was put on the shelf um, but this was a uh, uh, something that's been brewing now for for four or five years, and a dispute between the current boss of the Bonanno crime family, Michael, or alleged current bo- uh, boss of the Bonanno crime family, Mikey Knows Mancuso, and his former acting boss, uh, Joe C. Camerano, and uh, it got violent. And it's all over the New York newspapers right now. Gangland News broke it. And then everyone else uh, ha- have had a field day. And w- we're going to get into it, jump into the deep end of the pool. Dave's out in Philly. He's taking the temperature out there. Uh, John <laughs> Panisi, uh, one of the, the really the foremost experts on modern day mafia activity, because he was right in the thick of it until recently when he was a made member of the Lucchese crime family. But John knows... Josie, and uh, interacted with uh, a lot of Bananos in his time uh, on the street. So, you know, John, why don't you just, well, wh- why don't we first just break down exactly what happened for, let's say, 30 seconds, and then we'll throw it to, to, to Mr. Panisi and Mr. Schratweiser. So, Mikey knows Mancuso goes to prison in the, uh, and turns over the family on an acting basis to uh, Joe Camerano. Uh, At some point, I believe around 2017, uh, Joe Camerano decides to pull the capos in the Bonanno crime family if they want to keep Mikey Nose as the boss. Mikey Nose takes this as uh, an affront. And uh, when he comes out of prison, he demotes Joe C. And Joe C was persona non grata and was told not to show up at his own father-in-law's funeral wake, which happened this past weekend. Vito Grimaldi, uh, Josie is married to uh, Vito's daughter and was sent word by the administration of the Bananos, Mikey Nose and his um, main lieutenants to, to, to not show up at the funeral. Josie disregarded that and then showed up with a group of bikers for protection. And when he went to go pay his respects to his father-in-law at, in the coffin, uh, he was attacked by three made members of the Bonanno crime family, including a capo, uh, Johnny Mulberry. And then the bikers that had been brought to watch his back stormed into the uh, funeral home and an all out melee occurred and at the end of the day according to the reports the the banano soldiers and capo were the ones on the ground uh, uh get had gotten the worst of it were bloodied battered and uh right now i guess the balls in mikey knows mancuso's court with how he's going to respond to that there's a lot of people worrying worrying that there will be an uptick in violence in in in, a, in response to this John, where where are we? Where are, where do we stand right now? Well, well, first I just want to tell you that Mikey knows not only shelved Joe C, Joe Camerano. Mikey knows shelved John uh, Porky Zanco- Zancocio, uh, who was the consigliere. He shelved Vito Cormaldi, who was a captain in the family, and he shelved Vito's son Joseph, which was an acting captain. So well, he took out a whole crew. <laughs> um, were, were, when you were on the street, what, what was Mikey Nose's reputation? Uh, for people that are familiar with the New York mob, Mikey Nose traces his roots all the way back to the Purple Gang, the, the New York Purple Gang um, of the late 70s, and uh, was a guy that I think was 
thought of as future boss material, but this behavior kind of, in some ways, is you could argue is unbefitting of a boss. Yeah. Well, as you know, our family and particular, uh, in particular, um, Matty Madonna, the acting boss of our family, disliked Mikey Knowles. And that's brought, all this came to a head when the Bananos entered the, the club in uh, the Bronx that day. You know, a lot of people know about that incident. So there was there was no love uh, for Mikey Knowles as far as Lucchese's point. Dave, what are you hearing uh, on your end uh, in Philly, New Jersey? You taking the pulse of what what the guys are saying around there? Yeah, I talked to a couple guys this morning just about this particular incident and asked if anything like this ever happened in Philly. Uh, I didn't recall anything like this happening, especially the a, a beat down in a funeral home uh, by one or both sides there. But uh, guys mentioned two particular things to me. Uh, Salvi Testa's funeral and Pat the Cat's burritos funeral. Apparently, Nikki Scarfo, who was the boss then of the Bruno uh, Scarfo crime family, ordered everyone to stay away from the funeral, and they did. Um, that's generally what everybody's saying, that if a boss or anybody else, high-ranking underboss, tells you to stay away from something, you stay away. Uh, all of them were kind of shocked that something would happen right there at the funeral home. Uh, most guys said to me, I talked to three different people, most guys said to me, we'd probably deal with this afterward or the word would get back to, in this case, with Salvi Testo or Pat the Cat's Burrito, word would have got back to Nicky Scarfo Sr., who we all know, you know, was a bloodthirsty guy and probably would have exacted some type of uh, retribution for that kind of situation. So it's all about respect uh, in a situation like this. Um, I saw Mancuso's lawyer firmly denying that he ordered any, anything like this to Happen, we should probably put that out there. So yeah, we'll we throw in a bunch. Of, yeah, we'll throw in a bunch of allegedly's here mm -hmm. um, to cover that. But you know, let, let's be clear. I this is kind of outrageous. I mean, I'm a New York guy. I'm from Long Island. I know where that funeral home is. Um, and and I got to be honest with you, this is outrageous. It's ridiculous. I mean, to take something out on a guy that you have a beef with at his own father-in-law's funeral uh, in front of his family and his people. I mean. That's just ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I don't get it. And as far as what what he's going to do next with the biker group that allegedly uh, put the beat down on the three uh, made members, what are you going to do? You're going to go look for these guys now with a bunch of mob guys and, and you're going to tune these guys up or you're going to do something like that. We should get into that later. There was some comments from an FBI agent in the piece that Jerry Capisi wrote that I firmly agree with. Um, Let's see what the retribution is, if there's any. Um, I think that I think that the main points are a the fact that Joe C was shelved, his father-in-law was shelved, and I was mentioning it to Dave earlier, and I just want to say that a lot of people throw this word "shelved" around like it's insignificant. Let me tell you the significance, and I know you guys know, but for the people who don't know, I'm going to explain the significance of that word shelf. That word shelf means we would kill you, but we're not. So we're going to shelf you. Be lucky that you're alive. So a lot of people, they think that word is just like a like they put on pause for being a mobster. You're excommunicated at that point, right? So with that being said, being that Vito was deceased, was excommunicated, as well as Joe C. It's no longer Mikey knows his business, who goes to Vito's funeral or not, specifically his son-in-law, right? Here's a guy that was in that life. And let me just let me just state for the record. My dealings with Joe, I call him Joe Saunders Jr. or Joe C. He was a gentleman, 100% a gentleman in that life. And so was John Porky. They were two guys that I respected. They carried themselves like gentlemen at all times. I, every time I dealt with him, respect dripped off of him. That's, that's how, how respectful he was. So knowing his character, the guy's going to his father-in-law's funeral, right? 
And a lot of people, and I think you guys know, I do not in any way glorify this life. I kind of strip away that curtain of glorification and show the life for what it really is, right? This story only proves me right because you attack the guy, allegedly, right? They sent a message for these guys. And we can't say allegedly because they were there in the funeral parlor. And were ordered to attack this guy if he showed up. When they attack him, his wife is there. I believe Vito's wife is still alive, which would mean his mother-in-law is there. Their entire family and friends are there. You did this in front of, in, in front of family, which is a no-no. That's, that's a cosa nostra no-no. You, you don't do things like that. And it just, it just goes to show you, this is where the mob is today. This is the mentality of the people in the mob today, of what they, of what they, they lowered themselves to be. And, and people would debate me and say, oh, he says that the, the, the loyalty, there's no loyalty and there's no honor and there's no respect. Well, I want somebody to tell me, where's the loyalty, where's the honor, and where's the respect of of what that incident represents. And it's, I, I gotta say this, John, I, talk, I agree with what you're saying. It's so narrow-minded if in fact he did order this. It, it's, you, you're looking at a beef with somebody kind of circumventing the funeral of his father-in-law yeah. and their family. I mean, you're so focused on how pissed off you are at a guy if in fact he did order this. You're so pissed off at them that you don't see the ramifications from this. You don't see how this makes your family look, your crime family look, that your guys would show up and do this, even ordered or not ordered. If your guys did it, same thing here. Funeral stuff, you go to a family member's funeral, that stuff stays outside or you just don't go, right? Yeah. You're not taking this out in there. And then to, in my mind, Look what you just did to the Bonanno crime family. They're all over the headlines everywhere. I mean, this story's getting legs all over the place. You know, I mean, Jerry Capisi broke the story on his column. People are following it. I get all that. But you just embarrassed your entire family here. And what are you going to do about it now? You're left it, in a bad well, spot. Now, well, yeah, well, now they have, egg, as they say, right? now you got egg on your face. Yeah. And you're in a position where there's A, if you act, you know, you, you, you know, law enforcement knows who, 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 who's behind it. Right. And and B, if you don't act. You know, where's the respect that other families are going to look at your family for letting your guys you sent your guys to do allegedly. Right. Mm -hmm. But they were there and now they got their ass kicked. Yeah. So, so let me do about it. Can I jump in for a sec? Yeah, I, I want to. Sure, show, man. You can jump in anytime you want. This is like the this is like the WWE of uh, mobcast, mob podcast. I, I wanna, for crying out loud, I jump add in. Some, some context here. Yeah. When when you think about where this came from, and what family that all this drama is emanating from, it's really not surprising. I mean, dating back to the 1960s with Joe Bonanno and the Banana War. The, the Bonanno crime family has been dysfunction junction uh, in relation to the other four or five families. Not to say that the, the Colombos and Lucchese's and Genovese and Gambinos haven't had issues, but not to the degree that the Bonanos have. So the fact that there's this dysfunction being revealed or revealed again to the masses is not necessarily shocking in that respect mm -hmm. and it should be noted that joe c was is known as little joe saunders because of his dad was the original joe saunders who was okay. an underboss i mean very very highly respected yeah. organized crime favor not just with within the bananos but it, it, across new york city and beyond yeah. uh so you know joe c was someone that w w was 
brought up in the life, knew the life as John saying, this was, this wasn't a guy that was known as a, a, a knuckle dragger or a, a miscreant. He was, he was, re, he was just like his father. He was respected and uh, was, was a gentleman in, in that world. Uh, and then a lot of these articles that have been written are alluding to the fact that Mikey knows either is, or at least is coming off as in, incredibly insecure uh, in his in his leadership role, and some of this can be linked back. I think two years ago to his his shelving of uh, Porky, which resulted from Mikey knows I think was in prison at the time, and uh, at Porky's trial. Porky's attorney is is making the argument that you can't dub Porky the conciliary because there's been so many reports of so many different conciliaries yeah. within the Bonanno crime family. So you can't take at at you know face value this one report that that Porky was. In the 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 word coming out of prison was Mikey knows was offended by that because it made him look indecisive uh, as a leader for cycling through so many conciliaries. So, and so wait, so is the West side, the, the Genovese family indecisive? Right. But, but my point is he, Porky gets, I believe Porky got off on that case. He did, yeah. Uh, so if anything, there should be congratulations sent to him, but instead he's demoted because of a defense that his attorney used in court. So that, that kind of, I think foreshadowed well, uh, what what's going on here? Well, he also was very close to Joe C too. So like they, this was an attack on that. I don't want to use the word faction, but I'm going to on that faction because there was a, there was a split. And I remember when Joe had the position and Porky, there were certain members of the Bananos that were split with the Anthony Rabito faction. There was another faction there. Who was in that same trial with Porky. Anthony uh, Rubito was a couple of years. Go, goes back decades. Yeah. yeah. So so you had a split in the banana. So there were two factions. And obviously Porky was with the Joe C faction. But just to give uh, a little more background on Joe, I was dealing with Joe through Johnny Sideburns, and that's how I met Joe and was introduced to him. And there was a sit down going on and Joe at one time showed up at the sit down. And I would never forget, we were in my family's restaurant in Queens and he like gave me like a little nod. So I followed him and we sat outside and he said, come on, me and you will sit out here. He says, let them hash that out. He says, you know, he didn't want to be sitting there in his position, which he was right, right? Because it wasn't fair. And he wanted somebody to talk to. So he got me out there and, you know, he was talking about different things and telling me a lot of things. And I respected him right from the start at just how we're well versed and how much knowledge he had in that life, how he carried himself as a person. My captain at the time, Big John, right? Castellucci. Castellucci. Didn't meet, hadn't, had not met him yet. Right. And when he met him, he told me, he says, Boy, he says, you know, I knew this guy. He used to go, go to the Holly shops because Joe was into bikes and so was Big John. He says, I had no idea who he is at all. Meanwhile, the guy is an acting boss in a Holly shop, just, you know, looking around. And John would see him, had no idea who Joe was, which is the way it's supposed to be. Right. And that's mm-hmm. just how well schooled he was from his father. That's what kind of guy he was. He was he was a gentleman, definitely made for that life, definitely made for a boss's position and would never do what took place here, would never do that. His older brother, Dino, is in a is in a biker group. It's not considered a one percent gang. Uh, This this group that was at the funeral home and engaged in these fisticuffs are not considered by law enforcement a 1% game. So so they are no Hells Angels or uh, Pagans or the Outlaws. Um, 
but Dino, who is a year older than Joe, I believe Dino's 63 and Joe's 62, is a member of that group. So it makes sense that Joe, who's also an aficionado, uh, would be, you know, hanging out in Harley shops. Yeah. Yeah. His brother. And, you know, obviously, are people going to come out of respect when your father dies to wake? Absolutely. Were they put on notice that there may be a problem? Absolutely. You know, Joe's not Joe's not a stupid guy either, you know, and he obviously received some kind of message that he was not permitted to go to this this wake. He wasn't going to he wasn't going to listen to this message. First of all, is he's excommunicated. <laughs> huh. I mean, this is his father's way. It's not like he's going to another member's family, you know, a fa- another member in the family's uh, wake. You know what I mean? Then they could tell him, member. you know, so you're an not active, no. an active member. Yeah. In other words, now they could tell him, listen, you're not you're not welcome here. Right. He would and, know. So, and somebody probably be at the door and tell him that if he tried well, to come he in, would, right? He would know. Or, or in the parking lot. Hey, dude, you're not Joe, welcome here today. Right. Joe's been in a life long enough to know yeah. I'm not going to go to that week. You know, you right. know where you're welcome to where you're not. You know what to right. do. That, that's what yeah. happened in Philly at the two in Philly. Just that the, the order came down from Nikki's car for that no one was to go to those two funerals and guys did not go. Period. And, and I told you earlier that. Those kind of messages or notices that are sent out and word is spread around are one of two things. It's either I want everyone to stay away or I want everyone to show up. It mm-hmm. goes both ways. You know, those messages for wakes. We yeah. want like there were certain wakes. We want to make sure everybody's there. And then back to what uh, Scott mentioned, this family, let's not forget what they did. Years ago, they crewed up. And bum bum uh, bum rushed as the as the the kids like to use that word, bum rushed our social club, and they were very very lucky that certain guys were not in attendance that day because that would have went south quickly. You know the they were they had the administration and Big John there, and I could tell you that many many guys in our family have spoken badly about Big John Castellucci for not, you know, taking a uh, a different kind of stance when they did that. In his defense, what was he doing? He was kind of, he had his administration there, our administration there, and I guess he was going by their reaction. You know what I mean? Because yeah. one thing could set something off in that situation. But look John, at- give me a... Give the yeah. audience some background to that. What led to that uh, dispute where you had a Bonanno crew invade a Lucchese social club and looking for some type of altercation? So the main reason was that there was a conversation that involved Maddie, Maddie Madonna. And actually, I believe one of the uh, guys that were in the funeral parlor was this Johnny Johnny Joe Jr. Johnny Joe Spirito Jr. Who, if people don't know who that is, at one time his father is a high-ranking member with the Bananos. At one time, this is a guy, and I'll use the term "kid," who actually made himself the underboss of that family. Went up on a visit, came back, and told everybody that his father made him the underboss of the family. And wind up straightening out, which means inducted about 20 something of his friends. There was no names that went around. There was a whole big, big controversy that went on. They actually wind up shelving him, the Joe C faction. They actually wind up shelving him when this all came out and giving us the names of these guys, you know. And now, and then he was reinstated. He was actually brought back. But supposedly he was the guy who Maddie Madonna made a statement and said, we don't recognize bosses that are incarcerated, which which is not the smartest statement to, to make coming from a family whose boss was incarcerated because yeah. Camacho is incarcerated. So it was a bad statement to make. There was a lot more behind that. There was a lot more behind that. I never went into this before. I think I told one of you guys. what What had happened is, there was a woman, of all the times and of all the things that go on in a mob, even for myself, 
a lot of times a woman <laughs> is behind it. So there was a woman behind it who was actually once married to a Lucchese captain, a current captain in Lucchese family, right? They're divorced. She started dating Mikey Nose. When Mikey Nose went to prison, she started dating Michael Melnish, right? And that's what the Michael Melnish beating that took place outside of Rayo's was over, over the woman. Hmm. Well, a Lucchese associate, and I'll say his name, um, Joey Cupcakes Urgitano, starts dating this woman also. I don't know the time uh, frame, was it during the Michael Melnish or after, but he starts dating her. She shows him a letter from Mikey Knows sent to her from, from in prison. He sent, he sent her this letter. And in the letter, he's discussing street business, which is a known with the woman. This cupcakes allegedly takes this letter and says, let me have this letter. He gives it to Maddie. Maddie goes on a campaign to try to get the Bonanno family to take Mikey Nose down as the boss as a result of this letter. And during this discussion, he makes the statement that we don't recognize this guy, that he's incarcerated as a boss. And like I said, it was not a great statement to make. No. As a result of that, they take a front to that message and they decide to crew up. During the planning of let's get together and let's go storm the Lucchese Club in the Bronx, Anthony Rubito, who is an old timer, had a position, is involved. They know Anthony Rubito is not going to storm the club. Anthony Rubito is going to go in there and try and be diplomatic, which they should have did this in another way. They should have set up a meeting with Maddie or Stevie or Joe DiNapoli or somebody, a, a captain, somebody, and set up a meeting and had to sit down over this alleged statement and that they felt insulted. What they did is, Another guy, this, this Ernie Aiello, who's also involved, but look look at the people who were involved in this incident at the funeral party. You, you're going to hear their names pop up, right? He was one of the instigators. Right? He was one of the instigators in this let's go charge the Lucchese Club. They knew, ah, you know what? Nobody pick up Anthony Rubito. Anthony Rubito was left on a corner waiting to get picked up. They never picked him up. And I noticed because Sideburns, Johnny Sideburns, was very close friends with Anthony Rubito. Anthony Rubito said they were supposed to pick me up. They left me standing on the corner. Why did they leave him standing on the corner? They didn't want diplomacy. They wanted to go like street punks because you have to understand, these are members of the Bonanno family. You are part of Cousin Ushter. What are you doing acting like street punks, like a gang? You, this is not a gang. When I, you know, I say we, I'm no longer in a life, but when I was in a life, we were in a gang. We were supposed to be people that, that walked and carried ourselves with on. Supposed to, right? That's why they left Anthony Rubito on the corner and they go into the club and and with pistols, you know, some of these guys had pistols in their waistband. And, you know, that whole thing could have went sideways very quickly, had other guys been there that day. They were very lucky that it didn't. And I think everybody was because it would it would have, you know, there would have been people at at the at the very least that got hurt or people would have got killed that day. Hmm. John, you know, I'm interested back to the wake and the and, and the fight there. Um, how should this have been handled? You talked about diplomacy before. Should somebody sort of high ranking have gone to see Joe C and said, so, hey, look, Mikey's not happy about this. He doesn't want you to go. He doesn't want to do anything here. But if you go, there could be ramifications afterward. What, what's the proper, if there is a proper way in the mob, what is the proper, by the rules, way this probably should have been handled? So, More diplomatically? 
yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't want to take away just in case they did reach out and send him a message. They might have done that. They might have sent him a message. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they did. They mm-hmm. might, yeah. There was a message sent to him the week before. It wasn't, it, it wasn't done the way that Dave just explained it, or no, or John would have, yes. I think, done it. But I think there was a message sent, and then he sent message back saying, "I'm not listening." To what you're telling me to do, yeah, I mean, yeah. so I mean, that, but that's my point. My point here is, yes. John, there's a way to handle this, and then there's a way not to handle this. This is the uh, if it happened the way Jerry Capisi described it, this is the way absolutely not to handle this. Yeah. So how so, how would you handle it in that position? So you know, first of all, is if I was in the position, I I, I have to take into consideration that it's the guy's father. So right. that's that that guy's father-in-law. Sorry. This guy's father-in-law, this is his family. It's not like he's going to somebody else's wake. You know, then we could enforce it. This is his family. His wife is going. His kids are going. It's their grandfather. This is, this is, this is about respect now, right? There's two kinds of respect. There's respect in that life, but we have to respect somebody's family as well, right? So that's that's first and foremost. Second, mm-hmm. let's say Joe, let's say. Joe C was sent a proper message like, hey, we don't want you to attend this week, right? And Joe C sends a message back, I'm going in. I'm not listening to you, right? And he goes. And we sent somebody there just to see if he was going to not listen to what we had to say. I would definitely instruct whoever it is that's going, don't you dare do anything at that wake. Don't you put your hands on him. Don't you cause a scene. Don't do anything at that wake. Let him know that you see that he let him know that you were there. Let him see you and then leave and come back and let us know that we're there. And at report that, back, right, John? You report back. Report back. But you don't, but you don't do anything. No. And then at and then at that point. At that point, now we will deal with Joe C after the wake is over on our, on our terms, because that is what's called Cosa Nostra. This is called street punk moves. Disrespectful. There is no honor in that whatsoever. And, and you don't do things like that. And I And to be honest with you, when I heard about it, and I heard, and I mentioned to both of you guys, I heard about it prior to the article. I just didn't want to, I, I just didn't believe if it was true or not. I didn't want to go with it. I, when I, when I seen what family was involved, it didn't surprise me not one bit, not one bit, because of their past history. You know, you have to go by past history sometimes with, with, with things and, and they have a bad track record as yeah. Scott mentioned. And I mean, John, if the, if the life is about honor and respect, John, and it's been like that for decades, right? If it's about that, how do you take out the eraser and wipe off the board and wipe that completely away and do something like this? I mean, it, it there's no honor. There's no respect. In fact, it goes a thousand percent in the wrong direction. Yeah. But but I think that not only are not only will the four other families in New York be looking down at this because it it makes got to remember something and and maybe people don't get it when an associate does something it's a reflection on whoever he's with, right? And that's a reflection on the bagada. But when any member of that life does something, it's a reflection on Cosa Nostra as a whole. And it makes everyone look bad, everybody. So it makes them look bad, but the public now, the public's eyes are opening up and saying, you know, look at these guys, look at what they did. They attacked a 60 something year old man in front of his wife, in front of his kids, in front of, I believe, his mother-in-law and their whole entire family. Do you know what these Italian wakes are like? <laughs> People are coming from 
Italy, people are coming from different states to come to these, these wakes, right? And in front of the public, you have people that are friends of, of, of the family. This is the public that would there. You, you, you don't do things like that in that life, but yet they do. It, so was, let's, it let's, was a bad, bad move. Let's shift uh, gears and talk about the fallout. And uh, from that, discuss uh, the fact that the, the, the old way of doing things uh, the fact that uh, there really isn't the mob hit parade in any city uh, like there there was in, in the 20th century. Uh, I've I've been on a few podcasts recently, uh, telling you know talking about famous mob hits and where we exist today in the mafia in 2022, and just look at the numbers uh, between the you know the 20 years between. 02 and 22, there's been, you know, maybe 10, 11, 12 mob hits around the country. Uh, and in the years between 1982 and 2002, there might have been a thousand. So, I mean, you're, you're, there's been quite, quite the uh, downturn. And, and, and it, it's believed that there's been an edict, uh, not just in New York. But in Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, um, that you know, mob murders uh, are are a thing of the past. We mentioned Michael Meldish in your in your story uh, about that incident between the Lucases and the Bananos. He was the 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 last real significant yeah. uh, mob hit in New York in 2013. His uh, you know the people that ordered that have all been. Uh, convicted and sent to prison. Dave, over in your neck of the woods, the last mob murder was in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in my neck of the woods here in Detroit, uh, probably 2007. So yeah. uh, it's it's been a while. What, what, yeah, if this is a graph, if this is a graph, this is now, this is way yeah. back then. Like, right. well, a, like well, an uphill spike like you haven't seen before. Well, I have a funny... I have something to share on that note. So I received, I can't even tell you the amount of messages and DMs that I received uh, from Instagram over this incident, but I'm going to just highlight one that has to do with this. A guy wrote me and said, John, 20 years ago, they would have, they would have, they would have killed this guy, Joe C and those bikers. Right. And my answer was no, my friend, 20 years ago, that incident would have never took place. Nobody nope. would have did anything like that. But you, you guys are correct, and I think that it's it was more about what what riles the public or the media rather and law enforcement up more than a mob hit. Nothing, right? It's not a moral. It's not a moral and ethical decision. It's a no. business decision. <laughs> this is yes. So no, it's a, I don't want to go to jail decision. That's what right. the decision so is. So that's really if it's if it's countrywide or just New York State or Philly, it's basically an organized organized crime thing where they're saying, well, finally they smartened up because they they never they never learn from history. Except now with this, they do. What does history show us? If we start leaving bodies laying around the street, they're going to come after us and wipe us out and they're going to come down on us. So let's stop doing that. Let's start shelving these guys. And that's why, again, I bring up how that word has such magnitude. It's not an insignificant word. People throw it around like it's nothing all the time. They do it with me and they don't realize that. It's your Bogata, your family, basically telling you, Joe Camerano, we would gladly kill you, but because of what's going on, you know, we're going to shelf you, but we would gladly kill you. So be happy that this is what's going on. Otherwise, 20 years ago, we would have put you in a trunk. That's, that's really what shelving is about. <laughs> yeah. And I got to tell you, George uh, Anastasia and I talked about this on the last Mob Talk sit down video we did uh, earlier in the month. Um, listen, in, in Philly, 
the mob guys are in their late 50s. Joey Merlino just turned 60 in their early 60s. They've all done 9, 10, 14. Some have done 20. Some have done more. Joe Massimino's still in jail. He's probably done half his life in prison. Uh, yeah. Some of the Scarfo yeah. guys have, yeah. Some of the Scarfo guys, 25 to 30 years in jail, 28, 27, 26. Those guys do not want to go back to jail. I have heard down here that there is an edict from New York, from the five families, that they don't want bodies left on the street anymore because there's so much intermingling of business in terms of making money between families and groups and crews and things like that. What reflects on one reflects on all. John, you talk about this a lot. You and I have conversations. If one group does one thing, that just brings bad light and heat and the feds on top of everyone, not just one group, not just your little wing of the family or whatever. Everybody gets embarrassed. Everybody. Then your business and whatever tape or whatever cooperator they have who is wearing a wire, that stuff then gets played out in a, in a courtroom, in a public courtroom, in a federal courthouse covered by reporters very rarely now. I will say that about the media covering those kind of things. But that gets played out. And that's no good for anybody. It's not good for business. It's not good for making money. It's not good for anything. And John, it goes right at what you always talk about, the honor, the loyalty, the respect. That all, that all blows up when you do that. That's why there hasn't been any murder. I, I know Scott wanted to talk about the last 20 years. Let's talk about the last 10. In New York and Philly, there's been two murders. Two. And I'm not even sure yet at this point, Scott, you've done some research on this too. That the Gino DiPietro mur- murder in 2012. Yeah, we're not, yeah, we're not, we're not positive. It's uh, we're not sure of- that was a mob hit. There were allegedly two mob guys involved. It could have been an isolated, isolated incident. Could have been sure a, a personal, sure right? And John, you've heard stories about that yes, murder. I've I've heard, heard, it could have been personal. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, and let's just for people that don't that don't get it, if if a guy is in that life, and what I mean by that is he's an inducted member. And he's, I'm just going to go around about, you guys know what I'm talking about. And he's, let's say at a card game and somebody gets disrespectful and says something disrespectful to the guy and insults him. And that guy takes it upon himself to maybe get somebody else and together they go and they kill this guy. Right. That's not a mob hit. That's not, that's a personal vendetta like that's a personal beef between a guy who happens to be a member of the mob but you don't really look at that as oh that's a mob hit just because the guy's in a mob that doesn't make it a mob hit because Mm. he wasn't sent to do that you know he's taking it upon himself to do that maybe maybe and john and john you well know when you do something like that you take care of your own personal business using yourself as a made guy and another made guy yeah right that brings heat on you from your own family well, because, because, hey, I, hey, did you run this by well, somebody? I was just did you let that. people know? Did you touch base with your boss, your capo? Yes. Right. Your the lieutenant in charge of you, your street boss. I mean, did you touch base? You didn't yeah. touch base and you did this. And now look at the heat on our family because you did. You, I told you, um, I know I told you, I've said it before that. There was a time they sent us to, and at the time, we didn't know who it was. You know, we know now. It was, we were going to assault Stevie Korea's son-in-law. Again, I say at the time, we didn't know who the intended victim was. And things got so crazy that at one point, and, you know, (laughs) I hate to say it, but I, I mean, this is my mind frame back then. I was in the life. I had told another member of our family, Anthony Guzzo, I said, you know what? Get me a pistol. I'm just going to shoot into his car and, you know, I'll, I'll hit him low. And I got reprimanded by my captain. Don't forget, I wasn't trying to go to go kill the guy, but I got reprimanded just for that. And, and, and what he said to me was, who F told you to go shoot anybody? We told you to go assault somebody. So that was me taking kind of matters into my own hands in that sense. Imagine taking matters into your own hands and killing a guy without running it past your captain. It could cause you a major problem. We should mention that uh, there there actually has been three mob related murders out of New York in the last couple of years, but not of 
the significance of what the Mike Meldish hit was, who, by the way, uh, Mike Meldish and Mikey Mancuso or, and uh, uh, Mikey knows Mancuso both came up in the purple gang, the New York purple gang of the, well, of well, the- my, my, Mikey Meldish was his boss. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, in 2018, Sally Daz, who was an associate of a bunch of different crime families, got killed by his own kid. Yeah, I don't really consider a, that a anything object. to do with the mob. Right. Uh, Vincent Zito, another Lucchese loan I, shark. Not I don't really consider that another one, nothing to do with mob. This is, you got two incidents, right? Just because the people involved were on record right. with people or, or associated to, to a crew or a family, you have one incident where a son, I mean, as crazy as it is, gets the father killed with blood members for money. And you have a second incident for money again, where a best friend or a close friend kills and robs his his friend. And to me, I don't I don't personally consider those mob hits. No. And then you have the, the, the boss of the Gambino crime family, Frankie Boy Cali, killed by a mentally disturbed friend of his nieces, uh, which, again, it has nothing to do with uh, mob politics, but it was a, yeah. a, a so, someone that was a mobster who was killed. Yeah. And we know that he was and is a mentally disturbed young guy who thought in his mind that he was going to make a citizen's arrest, right. you know, and it went sour, you know, you know, and, and, and we should, we should also, this, this is a good segue or a good uh, connect the dots here. We're talking about how the mob doesn't murder like it did in the past. This, this kid, I, I'm blanking on his name right now, but this uh, kid, Anthony, Anthony uh, Cam- Camasso. It's been three. It's been three years, and and he's still standing. If this would have been at any other time, any other era in, in uh, the New York Mafia, they would have killed this guy. Look, I hope I'm wrong because I've I've made this prediction, and I don't I don't want to make predictions when somebody's life or anyone's life is at stake. But I was asked a long time ago what I thought about retaliation from the Sicilian faction. And my my answer was it what it's not if, it's when. And on and it's it's unfortunate, you know, I think his name is Anthony uh, forget his name. But anyway, the shooter is probably in the safest place, right? Because he's He's in prison and probably in protective custody somewhere, wherever he is. But he does have a mother. He does have a father and he does have a brother. And, you know, I would I would say that if anyone was going to pay a price, it would be the father or the brother. And it would be years from now. You know, they're known to sit and wait and wait and wait you know, and then act. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I really and do. Listen, they, they may be waiting for this to all play out too yeah. in court. We don't know. That, I mean, this guy's been analyzed back and forth. Um, he has a very good attorney, by the way, um, who has made their points in court and he still remains where he is now. Are we three, three and a half years since this happened? A little more? Yeah. Um, and nothing's happened on either end from the mob and or the justice system at this point. At this point, I think the, the kind of temporary ruling or standing ruling is that he was not of sound mind when this happened. So his name's uh, Anthony. Com- his name's Anthony Mello. Comello. Yeah, I looked him up. Yeah. L- l- let me also just. I forgot for too, record. John. So you, you're in safe ground there. Let me just state for the record, and I know this again. We're talking about a different era, but the fact that someone was mentally unstable, you know, John Gotti's people killed someone because he took a sh- uh, took a yeah. shot at him. In right. the neighborhood, yeah. there was a guy that was known as kind of a neighborhood crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't take that into account when they decided. To no, they didn't. It. You're right. But it goes back to what you guys were saying earlier. What was the era that right. the guy that that's was 1987? Okay, this is versus yes, you see the difference. <laughs> yeah, the difference is is that you had guys 
wise guys walking around strapped up, meaning with pistols back then, versus a, a boss that was heard a noise, come out of his house, seen there was a fender bender. And my my theory of it is that, you know, he was trying to, you know, he's seen it was a young kid, meaning Frankie Cali seen a young kid backed up into his truck. You know, he could always get the truck. It's no big deal. He'll always get the truck fixed. No big deal. And I, I believe it's when he went to go walk away, the kid must have turned around and said something like, you're under arrest or something. I'm putting you under arrest or whatever. Mm. And that's maybe when he might have said something back to him and been a little firm with him or maybe said, go F yourself or something like that. Yeah. And the kid pulls out and, and, you know, and shoots him. But, you know, you're right. Years ago, the same thing similar happened to John Gotti and they, they dealt with it. What, what's, what do you think the difference in the situation uh, if Joe Saunders, the original Joe Saunders was still on the street? I mean, this would would have never reached this point. You talk about Joe Saunders, the father. Joe Joe C's dad. I mean, he was the. Con- does, he was does that play a role if he if he's here? Does, does any of this happen in the last four or five years? No, no, no way. You know, don't let's not forget the mentality of a Joe Saunders senior, the father, and a and a Mikey knows Mancuso. I mean, look at look at some of the look at some of the incidents that went on. Would would Mike, you know, <clears throat> they say in that life, past performance goes a long way. <laughs> it says a lot. Yeah. Look at Mikey knows his past performance. And look at yeah. his past performance just as a boss, even from in prison. Yeah, we should also point out who tapped originally, who originally tapped Mikey knows as acting boss. It was Vinnie Gorgeous who made Mikey knows his acting. And where's Vinny Gorgeous right now? Vinny Gorgeous is in, in prison, prison for life. <laughs> for trying to put out hits on judges and prosecutors. Yeah. He's going on hits so, himself. <laughs> right. And going on hits himself while he's a capo and acting boss. Uh, uh, so this but is listen, a, hey, he still looks good, Scott, in prison. Yeah, I saw, I saw a recent she, picture of him the yeah. other day. Still oh, looks good. You know, <laughs> but you know, the name. You that there's yeah. a long line of lunacy. Yeah. Uh, in the Bonanno uh, uh, boss's chair. In the Lucchese, we have Vic Amuso, who's been running that family from prison for, for 30 plus years, who mm. was a, who until the boss and uh, the old school boss in Philly, Nikki Scarfo, died a couple of years ago, was aligned with Scarfo in prison. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're talking about two lunatics there that were uh, yeah. <laughs> like minded lunatics behind bars. Who who thought they could retake the Philly mob? Yeah, because Vic right. Musso backed Nicky Scarfo Senior. Far it's, from it. Back to the back to the story at hand. I I just I just shake my head more and more the more I think about it. Not that not in disbelief, just that it was the fact that it was done. That 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 you know you would they would step that low. To 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 attempt to do something like that is just outrageous. So the three and, people. And, go ahead, Jay. No, no, go. I so see the three the three alleged Bonanno um, soldiers and capo that that were there to enforce Mikey Nose's edict were Johnny Joe Jr., who we mentioned before, yeah. Ernie yeah. Aiello, who Correct. we mentioned before, and then Johnny Mulberry. Who was the who's the capo was the highest ranking member there. And Johnny Mulberry, from my research, and tell me if I'm wrong, guys, I believe he was the one that was uh acting as a go-between for Mikey Nose when he was in prison, when Joe C. Jr. was trying to possibly bump Mikey Nose out of the boss's seat and pull the capos. It was Johnny Mulberry that was coming to deliver him the messages from Mikey Nose. I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. I could be wrong. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pull this apart. Yeah. Let me pull this apart for a second, John. Um, internally, now that this actually did happen, yep. three guys went and took care of this at the funeral home in a very embarrassing, disrespectful call, whatever you want to call it. Yep. What's the internal strife now 
in the Badano crime family, these three guys got the crap kicked out of them. Yeah. So not only did we go there to do what you wanted us to do, we got the shit kicked out of us. So what are you now going to do? Yes. Or so that's whoever, whoever, let's say, let's let, let his lawyer says he didn't order anything. OK, let's let's say that's true. What are you going to do about this now? Dude, we went and did what you wanted us to do. And look what happened to us. Right. What's the internal strife there inside so the banana crime family? Exactly what you just said. Those three guys out of everybody are going to put the most pressure for revenge. That's 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 where because they were embarrassed. They were not only embarrassed, they got their ass handed to them. So yeah. that, that that's where the pressure is going to come from. But when we when um, excuse me, Scott mentioned earlier that, or was it you, Dave? Somebody mentioned Mikey knows his insecurity, right? Yeah. Scott. Scott. You're dealing with an insecure boss, right? So do the three guys who got the the bad end of that situation really have to poison an insecure boss's mind for revenge? No, because yeah. now if he was insecure before this happened, how insecure is he now that he has egg all over his face that I'll use your words. Allegedly, he sent three of his guys to go handle something and they got wiped out in a funeral parlor. Yeah. And, and not place. associates. They didn't send, oh. Uh, oh. you know, he didn't farm out muscle. They weren't Albanians oh. or, you know, these were uh, made. All guys. Right, let, let's 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 go another direction for a second. Let's go another direction for a second. This is all over the papers. It's in. I don't think the undisputed, most widely read gangland.com, right? It's all over the place. It's everywhere. People are talking about it. Mob guys are talking about it. What do you think the FBI is doing right now? You think they'd have trouble going to get a warrant right now to go up on a wire because of this? We have this massive internal strife in the Bonanno crime family. We have allegedly a boss ordering three made guys to go do this. And now we got to worry about retaliation. Your Honor, the public safety could be in danger here. Wouldn't you love to be an FBI agent in New York right now listening to this bullshit? You know, now, because you know, you know it's going to go this, if they're not already up on wires, John. Right. If they're not already up on the wires, could you see them having a problem getting a wire permission absolutely. to put up a wire on this? And what a conversation that would be here. When incidents like this happen, they 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 love it. Not that, not that, not that a sixty-something-year-old man right. at, a, at a funeral, or that that there was a brawl at a funeral. The fact that it took place because it opens up so many doors. Do I think that they went to Josie? Most definitely. I I don't. Most likely, he knows how to talk to them, and he's probably not going to say say too much. But mm-hmm. with that being said, I think that an incident like this opens up doors that the Bonanno family doesn't want to be open because it could yeah. lead to disastrous, <laughs> you know, things happen inside that family, like indictments. Yeah. Yeah. You, listen, you want a list of witnesses? You want a list of witnesses? You've been to a wake before, right, John? What do you do when you go to a wake? You sign in, right? Well, that, that you were there. Well, you gonna, want a list of witnesses? Gonna, Ask the funeral, subpoena the funeral home. Gonna subpoena the funeral home. Do you know what else they're going to do? They're going to they're gonna subpoena the... The, uh, well, there's got to be video of it. Yeah, there's cameras. You know, there's video of it somewhere. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna have, they're gonna have all of that. They not gonna, they have all of that. <laughs> Did they not farm out this this wake as well? This was held at a specific funeral home, but did I read properly that another funeral director handled it? That was uh, close with the family. I thought I read something about that, that as well. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. yeah, because they don't have a big enough venue yeah. or big enough facility to handle it, that kind of thing. But I, I could just see this like getting legs like no tomorrow. I would bet money FBI agents are working over the weekend this weekend, trying trying to get up on this and get ahead of this, A, to see if there's going to be retaliation. B, you must protect the public because what if there's a drive-by shooting at a clubhouse or something like that in retaliation for this? Oh, this is this is a biker gang that likes to hang at a particular location? Let's go visit that location. You gotta you gotta be worried about that, protecting the safety of the public 
Absolutely. And in addition, you might hear all kinds of interesting things on a wire like that. Yep. And, Rising and, and, tensions in a crime family are the quickest way to end up under indictment. I mean, really. I mean, look yeah, at yeah. all of the most famous internal squabbles within mob families around the country. And inevitably, at the end of the road, is every one of those guys that was involved are facing you know, the judge for it and most likely going to prison. Yeah. And they, the government, and particularly the FBI, have so many sources, so many, that they know more about this story than you, I, anyone who wrote about it, uh, Dave, um, probably even more than Joe C. knows. <laughs> they know more about it than anybody because the, they have their sources in place and they, mm. they already know the whole story. They guaranteed mm. they know the whole entire story, exactly what took place and what's going on afterwards. <laughs> and to your point, John, how do we know they didn't have somebody at the funeral? To see, maybe they heard about this beforehand. Maybe they're up on oh, a wire and they hear uh, about it, or they know about it, or somebody tells them about it. And they, I'm a member of the public. Yeah. I knew the family, right? And I go in, and you know, could have been anybody. And go in there and say, see what happens. Now you have your own witness right there. You I don't know that. that. I think that if the if there was any agents, they would have definitely they would have put a stop to it. That's for sure, yeah. right? You have to. Yeah. But I'm wondering if they were surveilling that 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 funeral. Because they that's their thing. I mean, we all know that they surveil yeah. the funeral, right? And let's and, be clear that this didn't again, I want to just emphasize for people that maybe ha haven't uh consumed the, the uh the headlines or the gone into the articles that hold those headlines. This didn't happen in the parking lot of the wow. funeral home. This happened in front of the body. Yes. As Joe C went to go pay his last respects to his father-in-law. He was attacked in front of the body. And this all happened in the middle of the funeral home. Yeah. And, and to stress the fact, again, in front of his wife, in front of right. his kids, in front mm -hmm. of, I think, his mother-in-law and their entire family and their friends. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like, not that it would make it any better if they did this outside, but mm -hmm. it's that more worse that they did it inside. It's an unmitigated PR disaster uh, that, like you say, it, it, the, it's just happening within the Bonanno crime family. This is an issue for Mikey Knows, but it's reflecting on everyone else in that life in New York City. And, and the heat comes with that attention and with that. Uh, it's a bad look. It's a bad look all mm. around. It's a bad look for everybody. And uh, it all it does is bring attention to, to stuff that, you know, you're, you're trying to keep attention away from. Yeah. And I don't think you can rule out possible criminal charges here at some point too. If there was surveillance video, if yeah. there were cameras there, right. all that kind of thing. Well, I mean, these see, are, these are, you may you see know. arrest. You may yeah. see people get arrested over this. So and if they could prove that there was an order passed down to okay. those three guys to go there. Now Conspiracy. you have a whole significant yeah. other direction by the Spirit. feds. Yeah. Potential. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as far as the bike is going, right? <clears throat> so, of course, of course, the Bonanno family would love to know who exactly the bike is with. The only, the only person that could tell them exactly who the bike is with is the brother of Joe, and he's not going right. to tell them. No, right. no. He's never going to give his friends up. And, and they're the only ones who really age. look good. look good here, even though I don't endorse beating other people, yeah. uh, having said that. They're the ones who come out of this looking good. They stood up for their guy. That's what in I mean. A, in, a, in a really, really disrespectful event that took place. And knowing what they were going up against, too. Let's not forget. You They're think that their oh, lives yeah. in danger by knowingly putting their hands on made guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, maybe that tells you a little bit about the mob and, yeah. their, and their, where they stand these days. Where we are right? in 2022. That, that, that allegedly independence had no problem stepping to them. Right? I couldn't have said that any better myself. This there great. you go. This I've been hanging great. around you guys a lot, a lot too, too much. That's a good. Nope. I think it's a good. That's a good yeah. note to end on. If you guys are all yeah. right, yep. this was fun. We want. We've gone about it. Oh, you know, all over an hour, and I think we've given uh, the viewers great insight. Uh, John, I can't thank you enough. Dave, you're a, a you're a, you're a living legend, a superstar. Uh, stop. I appreciate the invitation. 
I, uh, I nod to both of you guys for, for helping me do my job. And um, let's, let's try to maybe do this again. This was fun. No, absolutely. And I just want to say to both of you esteemed gentlemen that I highly respect the both of you. I think that, you know, I told, I, I've said it before I've told other people. So I appreciate being on with both of you guys. So. I, well, appreciate I appreciate you guys that. as well. Thanks for the invitation. Well, thanks, I do. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, John. Thanks. Uh, for for checking in on this special edition of uh, breaking news original gangsters podcast you're going to be able to check this out audio and video it's going to be on uh, dave's site it's going to be on our site it's going to be on john's all of our social media so check it out in the coming days thank you very much we'll see you next time scott bernstein og podcast out